Good afternoon, Guyana, and thank you for joining us again for another edition of Recount Watch. Today is day 26. My name is Hugh Todd, and today my guest is no other than Mr. Charles Ramson, attorney at law, national candidate, and former parliamentarian. Charles, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be with you, Hugh. Good to join you once again. You're in good spirits, which is which is good for us. Um, <laughs> this is presumably all things being equal, the last lap, last lap as we as we as we usually say in, in, in Guyanese parlance. Um, we still have a lot of uh, issues out there coming from the APNU FC camp that we need to debunk because uh, we want to have a smooth landing. Um, and that everyone in Guyana should be on the same page and there should not be any loose ends um, at the end of this process. Uh, we are convinced that the AFC, along with the APNU, would not stop at all. They are relentless in, in trying to ramp up their allegations. So I want to begin first and foremost with the joint services. Um, they've been making a lot of Unsubstantiated <laughs> uh, claims that we've had a lot of unstamped ballots coming from the joint services. Um, that's coming from Harmon, and there's a former colonel who also did a long missive in the in the in the editorial section of the dailies or letter to the editor, and I think that is cause for concern. Um, our discipline service members are very um, are very uh, law abiding. Um, they do a very good job for us. They've been in line for months now. Um, well, there's a lot of fatigue stepping in, and we don't want this type of, of rhetoric out there to create confusion within the the, the camp and bases. Um, how do you respond to these allegations, Charles? Okay, first of all, um, I I would like to let the joint services know, the discipline services know that the People's Progressive Party has been the party that has supported the joint ser the discipline services in a way that the PNC never has. And we never even required that the discipline services as a precondition for uh, our support for them, that they vote for us. Uh, in fact, it would, you would know uh, Hugh, that the decision to have the discipline services vote on a separate day so that and that their votes are not tabulated in a way where we know how they have voted was a decision that, that was taken under the People's Progressive Party. And you would also know, Hugh, that the, the political party that brought in the discipline services bonus, end of year bonus, which was taken away by the uh, PNC and, or I should say the APNUAFC, callously. Um, it was the PPP that brought in that, that bonus and uh, it was the APNUAFC that, that took that away. And when you look at our, our selection of our minister, uh, prime ministerial candidate, it's a man that has served this country with distinction for over 40 years. He is, he is a part of the discipline services. So if there's one party that understands the need to support the uh, discipline services and that the discipline services should know that we've got their best interests at heart is, is uh, the People's Progressive Party. So, um, and in order for the AP and UAFC to get their message in a way where it's incendiary, uh, they wanted to tell this entire country that tens of thousands of discipline services votes did not, were not stamped. So that basically saying that they were disenfranchised and that uh, if, if they were disenfranchised, then uh, this, this election should go again. So in a way they were trying to say that the discipline services should, should um, support uh, a new election because their votes were not counted. But really and truly, the facts of the, re of the matter is, Yolanda Ward said today that 1,500 votes were rejected in the tabulation so far. 
or 1500 ballots and said not votes 1500 ballots have been rejected for the 300,000 odd votes that have been counted so far 1500 form fall into the the category of rejected now what does rejected mean and what's the reasons for rejected it could be that people have put more than one x on the ballot they they could have also written their name on the ballot they could have um uh maybe damage their ballot in a way that it's not that it's that it's rejected and then finally that it's not stamped and if in all of those reasons and we're trying to to uh itemize for each of those categories so we can get a number but we've done it we've she's given a breakdown region by region and that the total number of votes that have been rejected so far has been only 1500 which means that the original claim by Joseph Harmon and the AP and UAFC that the discipline services votes are were not counted is a total lie, and uh, it 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 also shows the depth that they would go to of their desperation to create internal conflict and suspicion and uh, unrest in the country. On an on a issue that is just simply supposed to be the counting of the ballots. We can understand that the election is something that is fraught with a lot of uh, aggression and, and competitiveness and competitive spirit. And sometimes it, it, it gets a little bit heated, and I understand that. But when it comes to the point of counting the ballots, all parties should be interested in seeing that the ballots are counted accurately but also that it that the interest of the people is reflected in the government that they get and what we've been seeing so far is that they are trying to share this this disinformation so that they can create uh, a national unrest especially within a, such an important group uh which is the the armed forces the disciplined services um knowing particularly that they're saying this so that if anything were to happen, they they would want to tell them to, that they should rely on, on them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. The other issue at hand here is the fact that claims uh, were made about persons who are, were out of a jurisdiction um, that are alleged to have voted. Um, and the APNO AFC led by the dominant PNC um, they have been putting a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, we, as the People's Progressive Party, Civic, we are a party that believes in, in research. Uh, we, believes in, we believe in bringing out the facts and truth. Um, I want you to address this issue because it's very current and we're moving towards the end of this process and we don't want to leave any, uh, any stone stones unturned. Term. So we want to be able to flesh out every single issue. So at the end of it, all of Ghana will be on board with this process and we can move this country forward um, once again. Go ahead, Charles. So first, first of all, it, the, the letter sent by the uh, chairperson of uh, GCOM requesting information from the chief immigration officer who under the laws of Guyana is the commissioner of police um, about these names of persons that APNU submitted purportedly of persons who would have voted uh, and that were out of the country. First of all, I want to deal with the issue of her requesting that information, first of all, and then deal with the allegations of, of uh, persons out of the country and whether they're true or not. So her original position was that he who alleges must prove. That is a known and, and very common civil law proceed, uh, principle. He who alleges must, must prove. So if you have a case, you must be able to present to the, to the court that you have won your case, okay? So yeah. they have alleged that these persons were out of the country. So instead of allowing the APNUAFC to prove their case, uh, 
the chairperson of GCOM wrote to uh, the chief immigration officer requesting that information of whether these uh, persons were out of the country on elections day or immediately before. Um, now, I have a problem with that because it reverses her original position that of the burden of proving these unproven allegations. You, what you have to understand, Hugh, is that these allegations originally came from uh, hearsay. They, a number of their political leaders, uh, no, not to mention um, Aubrey Norton, a number of them have said that their evidence is that they went into the fields and other people told them that these persons are out of the country. And then they go on and tell the person who then puts that into a, a, a table and then goes to tell another person who is in the conference center that these persons are out of the country. So you have multiple layers of hearsay there. And yeah. the lawyers will tell you that hearsay is inadmissible as evidence unless it falls into one of the known exceptions for the hearsay rule. And, and then what we found out today was that when they had originally told the public that they had these 600 names that they submitted of persons who were out of the country. In fact, if you go to the Chronicle, it's big on their front page, 600 names. Yolanda Ward, the PRO of, of GCOM today said that there were 200 names that were submitted. That's the first thing. The second thing, when, when she was asked about whether GCOM had verified that those persons had voted in the election, she said no verification was done and that no, there's been no decision taken about whether, they, that whether GCOM would verify that information or not. Okay. And why it is that it becomes extremely difficult to verify that information in general, from the, the uh, chief immigration officer's standpoint, is that people who have multiple passports, meaning passports that are issued by more than one country, they can leave this country on a Guyana passport and return to Guyana on a different passport. But in our internal system of record collection, it does not accurately capture that this is the person. Okay. And then the second, the second part is that on that passport, when you leave the country, there is no correlation of information that is attached to our voting ID. So you've got a voting ID card, which has a voter ID number, but there is, that is not correlated to your passport number. So, and the immigration department doesn't ask you to present your, your uh, voter ID or your identification card when you leave. The third reason is that when you are traveling, let's say you travel from Ogle or you travel from Tamari to go to Suriname or anywhere else where Guyanese people can use the backtrack point of entry. So for all intents and, purpose, you, and purposes, you can be recorded as uh, exiting or departing the country, but you're not recorded as coming back in. And why that's important is because you would have seen already that the party has been doing a lot of work by going to look for these individuals. And we've been finding a number of them already. I'm sure you're gonna be showing us a few in, in a bit. Yes, I have, a, I have a sample. <laughs> exactly, so, but I just wanna finish up on, on a, uh, a couple other points, which is that number one, the, 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 or number three, the information is not verified um, from the political parties and the observers that that this person was indeed ticked off as voted. And many times when we have asked, in fact, all of the times when the political parties have asked to see that the list was ticked off, we were refused. So there's no way to verify uh, that these persons did indeed vote. And just from a legal standpoint, there's no legal requirement for lists to be ticked off when persons vote. It is merely a control mechanism so that it helps to kind of keep the uh, polling station um, sanguine. Uh, and, and then there's the other issue too, which is about the, the impartiality 
of the your commission of police, who is also under the laws of Guyana, as I said earlier, the chief immigration officer. Since yeah. the 2nd of March uh, 2020, the day of the election, we've seen a number of actions of, from the uh, Guyana police force, which raises questions about their involvement, let alone uh, their participation in the rigging of this election, because they would have forced us out of out of uh, the Ashman's building. They would have forced us out of the uh, Artichon Convention Center, the first attempt to recount. In fact, they pushed down um, uh, ropes and Ben, and he had injured. He was injured. He had to wear a sling uh, for a long time. And when one of the police officers refused. Are you hearing me, Hugh? Go ahead. Go ahead now. When one of the police officers refused to carry out the instructions of the of his senior ranks in the in the Guyana police force, they demoted him. His name is his name was Thomas. They demoted him because he they re, he refused to put the commissioners, GCOM commissioners out of the Ashman's building. So there are many questions that have to be raised about the Guyana police's, uh, Guyana police force involvement in the rigging of this election. And that extends to the leadership of the Guyana police force, who in this situation is Leslie James, and he's also the commissioner of police, the, um, the chief immigration officer, and how his role extends to supplying data which uh, would not be accurate. Okay, thank you, Charles. Uh, to back up what you were saying, we have a small clip we want to show the audience um, based on the allegations made by the APNU AFC um, to let them know that there are a lot of misinformation being peddled and we want to give some evidence. And this is only a sample. We have many, many more, uh, but we're releasing them in batches. So take a look. My name is Amos Bola, living at Long PRS Coast, and I vote March 2nd, 2020. My name is Compton Marcus. I live at Plantation Phillips, Public Road, and I voted on March 2nd, 2020. March 2nd, 2020. My name is Indira Andriana Passag. I live at Lot G Plantation, Philip S. Equivocos, and I vote for, I vote the 2nd of March 2020 election. I am Sirojini Budran. I vote the 2nd of March 2020. My name is Emma Wadi Sita Sogdi. I live at Lot 26 Maikoni. I vote at Maikoni Secondary School, and I live in Guyana. My name is Kudip N. Basdeo. I live at Hanson Tree. On March 2nd, I vote at number 10 school. My name is Marpati Anand. I live, live at Mahaika, number 10 Mahaika Creek. I vote the 2nd of March, number 10 school. I live in Guyana, I go no way. This is Marpati Anand. Yeah, you can. I'm Mina from Marcus Maikoni. I live in Guyana. I didn't leave the country. Uh, I don't can't remember how long, but I'm living here. I went and vote at least about four o'clock in the afternoon. So I don't know how these people could say that I didn't. I'm not living here. Sorry, that I'm not living here. Are these people crazy? I'm living here. I'm. I'm a resident of Marcus Maikoni. I born and grow here. I go to school here. I went to school here and I'm living here. So Charles, what, <laughs> what do we make of this? Is this a wild attempt um, by the APNO AFC to just pull random numbers and just throw them out there to create chaos? Because you know they would know that the, the People's Progressive Party Civic is a party that, that would do its work. Um, and we have evidence to show that they're, they're lying. Um, how do you respond to the APNO AFC? Look, I, this is just another example of desperation, right? Because this is conclusive evidence of their lies. 
and this is not this is not the first example of the conclusive evidence of their lies. I have I have we've found them lying so many times that we've lost count of how many how much lies that they're telling. Too right? much. It's too much. I, I see a video that circulates um, around the place with this guy from Trinidad where he says, "Oh God, boy, they 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 lying so much that talking to them is like that. They telling the truth, you know." They lie so much that it's talking to them is like if it tell the truth. It's really bad. It's really bad. And um, if these people uh, who have said that they're here form part of that list that has been supplied by uh, a chief immigration officer, it, it casts serious doubt on the integrity of the information coming out from uh, the chief immigration officer and the immigration department. And I think an investigation needs to be done about their involvement as well in this whole operation, a criminal investigation. So Charles, we are helping the APNU we have seen providing the facts. Um, shouldn't GCOM um, take into consideration that we're actually helping to do some work here and address this matter because we're actually helping to solve the issue um, from our end, because it's not, we're not doing it for the People's Progressive Party Civic, we're doing it for Guyana. Um, this is a national issue, um, and this requires a national approach. We're not doing this because we want to prove to only the APNO AFC, but we want to show Guyana that what is going on in the APNO, APNO AFC camp is an injustice. Um, it derails, um, the, it, 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 they're trying to derail the process and it should not be encouraged. Um, how do you think um, what we're doing should be received by, by, by GCOM itself? Look, what, what, you, what you have to understand, Hugh, is that, um, that fraud, uh, which is what they're alleging, is it destroys trust. So outside of the fact that it's criminal, it also destroys trust. And the one thing that the People's Progressive Party has is said before the election that it wants to do, and that I have every reason to believe that the presidency of uh, Dr. Irfan Ali will be one which is inclusionary in its way of governing the country, is the format or the premise to do that is to imbue trust in the country and is to imbue trust in the system. Now, that's one of the reasons why we're doing it, not to discredit uh, the, the institutions, but to discredit the lies. We have to be able to move forward. And in order to be able to move forward, we as human beings, we have to be able to understand who is it that, that we can trust? Which leader can we trust? And, and I was listening to an interview with uh, Larry Summers just a few days ago when he did an interview on, on the Business Insider, who, and I happened to be in contact with him just the other day too. And you would know he was one of the chief economic advisors to uh, uh, President Obama, and um, he was also the president of Harvard, et cetera. He was a professor at Harvard. Um, he said that one of the, the critical elements of countries that succeed are the ones that have higher levels of trust in the society. And, yes. and right now, all the lies that they're telling, they're destroying this country. The, the rigging itself is destroying the country. And it's after 28 years of rigging of elections, and having seen that Guyana moved from being one of the most prosperous countries in the region to becoming the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, it shows that they have not learned from their mistakes, which is the belief that they are smarter than everyone and that they know more than everyone. And that's the reason why they have to rig elections so that they could keep the People's Progressive Party out of power because they don't trust the, the collective intelligence of the country. But what, is, what has been the common denominator of, uh, of human beings as a civilization is that our collective intelligence is what gives us our advancement and our progress. And 
the, when you go to an election and you decide through a democratic process that who is going to, which group is going to lead the country, it is the exercise of our collective intelligence. And that is why when the APNU during their five years, they said that they gave themselves an A when they were in government. When David Granger was asked about his assessment of his performance while he was in government, he said he, he gave himself an A and the people gave him an F because mm -hmm. they voted him out. Yeah, so when we look at when we look at the allegations being made by DAPNU AFC, they're they're only focusing on our stronghold. Um, so they're trying to give the impression to, to 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 the rest of Guyana that this these irregularities that you're seeing here is being propagated by the People's Progressive Party Civic in collusion with GCOM agents on that day, on that given day. Now, when you look at the clips that we've shown, the persons did not say who they voted for. All they're saying is that they voted. They voted on March 2nd. They were in the jurisdiction. They have not left. And they need that to be addressed. They want, their, they, they want that to be recorded. It's race being put on the front burner here, race politics by the APNO AFC. We've seen it. We've seen it over the election campaign. They they specifically ran a race related campaign where they had these kind of like um, undertones of forward never backward never forward ever backward never, which was done in this kind of like race related uh, uh, sounding and drumming, and it, a lot of that lead up into the election and it's still there, so. We cannot move forward as a country if we are looking at it only from the point of view of race. And that's all that they have left, right? When people are thinking, I, I, I thought about it last night and I said to myself, this race that we're playing is a T20 race, right? Where they must have an outcome. But APNU is playing test cricket. They're the only, they're the only squad that I know that is playing T20 and is looking to their best outcome is a draw. And that's because they know that we're coming to the end of this recount. You're, you're less than 600 boxes to go. And if you do a tabulation, you're probably about seven days to go in terms of the recount, even though it says it's gonna go all the way up to the 13th, you probably have about seven days more of counting to go. At the end of those seven days, they will have to explain this one fact that uh, they have lied to their supporters that they, based on their SOPs in their possession, that they have won the election. Because so far, all of the results that are coming out of the recount are matching our SOPs. And just so that the, the viewers know, Hugh, right now we have an unassailable lead. They don't know that, and they haven't been able to calculate that, but I have, and our party has, and we, we know that right now we have an unassailable lead uh, based on the, the SOP. Yes, and thank you for that, Charles. We have scores of individuals coming to the fore, um, making it clear that they are not deceased, they've not migrated, they voted on Elections Day. We know what is the objective of the APNU FC? They have been trying from day one to discredit these elections. They initially said that it was free, fair, credible. They said that the recount will show clearly that they won, and we are the ones who were trying to derail the process. When we began the election, the recount, we saw what happened. They started to make all kinds of claims and they continue along that vein. And, and it got to a point where persons themselves started to come um, coming out um, and, 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 and showing their faces. I mean, this is a bold move. Um, democracy is alive in Guyana. Um, and those persons are coming out in numbers. Should this not be a lesson and an example for the rest of Guyana to understand that the APNO FC should no longer try to control 
the minds and the process within this country when it comes to democracy, and that people are now putting their, 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 their themselves out there because this is how democracy works. Um, do you think this is not a good thing for Guyana? Look, first of all, we've had uh, 23 years, consecutive years of a de democratic country. And it turns out that the people of this country, we like a democratic country. We like the freedoms that come with being a democratic country. And I would like to take you, Hugh, to our constitution. Our very first article says that we are a democratic sovereign state. Our very first article says that we are a democratic sovereign state. And that our article nine says that sovereignty belongs to the people. So not only do we like the freedoms that come with uh, being a democratic country and do, we, and do we adhere to these democratic principles as a people, but that is the rules that we are governed by as our constitution, because that constitution says that this is the supreme law of the country. So when you ask me, should they have new kind of, or should people not want their minds to be controlled by APNU? There's some people who want to be controlled by APNU, right? They, they just, there's some people that feel as though that no matter what happens in this world, APNU is the, ch is the choice for them. But the good news is that, the, that the, the vast majority of people in this country, they would like to see democracy reign in this country. Yes. There are some people within the APNU camp that are pushing for let the blow, 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 right? There, there are some people in the, in the APNU camp that are saying that, Granger, if you got to rig the election, rig the election, oh God, man, just rig the election. There are some people that want to see that we go back to an un undemocratic state once yeah. it's, their, it's their crew that's involved, right? But when their crew turns on them, who do they have to turn to? Because when we go around the country, because I went to uh, Linden, and one of the senior leaders within the Linden community from the PNC, they, that individual took his land and he has nowhere to turn. The, the, the council is not helping him out. Lands and surveys are not helping out. Nowhere is helping him out. And that's because he, this person is connected, is politically connected. So when they no longer have those democratic rights and reliance on the rule of law, who do they have to turn to? So it's, it's only the ignorant ones that say, oh, let the blow, blow, blow. And let, let uh, Granger just swear in yourself. Those are the ignorant, the ignorant people that we have that say that they believe in Guyana and they want the best for Guyana. Yes. But that is singularly destroying our country. And we've seen it so many times. We've seen it so many times across the country. And if you don't want to live in a democratic country, go and live in a kingdom. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go to uh, Qatar. Or go to North Korea. Go to Cuba and those places if you don't want to live in a, in, in a democratic country. We are a democratic state. The, the charters that we are, are, are members of, the uh, organizations we are a member of uh, internationally, all say that we are required to promote uh, democracy in this country, right? Yes. So to do anything otherwise, that blow blow will only sink us faster than, than tomorrow comes. All right, Charles, thanks for that. Let me look at the irregularities um, coming out of the, the APNU FC. Um, the last figure, I think, is north of 100,000 irregularities. Mind blowing. Uh, no, this is a party that said that they won the elections, and now they're coming to the people of Ghana saying that, you know, this was a total mess. All of the blame is placed at the feet at the, of the People's Progressive Party Civic. I want to address that along with the credibility of the process itself, the recount process. 
right. So it's twofold, right? So what they're playing for now is something that I have never seen anybody do before in a race, which is playing for a draw. So when uh, this, or, this point originally came from uh, David Hines. If you remember, Hugh, when he had said burn the boxes and just have some kind of interim government. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, I, and I didn't think that this is something that the PNC or the APN USC would have the indecency to pursue. But it shows how desperate they are now when the best that they can hope for is to hope for a draw, a do-over, right? Now, I want to just deal with the elements of the credibility of the election, not so much the credibility of the, the, the recount, because um, there's no one that questions the credibility of the recount. They may be questioning the election, Somebody may be, the APN USC may be questioning the election, but nobody is questioning the, the credibility of the recount. Originally, they said, the APN USC said, said that this recount was unlawful until David Granger came and said that uh, I'm the head of government and I speak for uh, the government of Guyana. And then poor Basil Williams had to go and put, tuck his legs, his tail between his legs and say, I never said that this, uh, this recount is illegal, which, you know, it just shows another level of the depth of the lies, right? Anyway, so when it comes to how our constitution functions, which is really the important part of this election, because everything that you see going on here, and this is what I want the viewers to understand, that everything that you are seeing that has been happening is happening because the rules of our political system and our society, which is found in the constitution, which is our supreme law, that is, it, it is happening because that constitution says that it must happen so. So what creates GCOM? The constitution. What creates this office called the presidency? The constitution. What creates this office called ministers and prime ministers? The constitution. What tells you when to call the election? The constitution. What tells you how to call the election? The constitution. What tells you what creates the votes? The constitution. What tells you who are going to be presiding over courts? The constitution. What tells you how are they going to be selected? the constitution. I'm saying all of this be, to emphasize the point that the, and all of our rules are contained in this document called the constitution, which you know is, is, is elevated to a higher word called laws, right? So it starts off by saying that we're, we're a democracy. It also says that we elect our president and our representatives of the, the National Assembly uh, through an election. And that election is supervised by an agency or a commission called the Elections Commission. That Elections Commission has two functions. First, it has the responsibility of creating a list of registrants. Second, it has uh, administrative conduct for the elections, the elections of which those representatives get elected. So that's the framework of how we get this election. Yeah. Now, I want to get to what happened in order for us to be able to get to this election. All of our laws, all of our budgets, Everything that we do that runs our society through the government is run through our parliament. In fact, the supreme organs of political and democratic power, according to our constitution, says that it is contained in the parliament, the president, and the cabinet. So what happened in order for us to get an election? 
parliament had to be dissolved, right? So you have no more members of parliament. That once it's dissolved, you need to have an election uh, within three months. That happened on March 2nd. But that in order for you to get another parliament, in order for you to get everything that goes along with having a government, so for example, to have a budget that allows you to spend, to have a parliament that allows you to create laws, all of those things have to happen with a reconvening of a parliament. And that reconvening of a parliament can only happen according to the constitution upon the conclusion of the election, and that is with the declaration of results. And when you get the declaration of results, it tells us who are your representatives who will become MPs, who can make those laws, pass those laws and pass your budget and tells you uh, things like, when are you gonna redo your list of electors? So if you wanna go and do house to house registration once again, all of those things, even though it passes, the commission has to do it, those things have to pass through the parliament as well. So you have to reconvene this parliament and it happens after the declaration of an election result, okay? So the reason why I'm saying this is because APNU has got it in their head, their, you know, old people that say that some people only got head for wear hats. Well, and that, and that easy lesson, hard for done. Well, this is, they've got it in their head that they can quash the election or have a redo of the election at some point that you can annul this election and then have a new election at some point, right? But that's not what our constitution says as well because the constitution also caters for issues that arise coming out of elections, which would include acts or omissions, electoral fraud, anything about membership of the, uh, of the parliament. That has, according to 163 of the constitution, it says that the high court, the Supreme Court of Judicature has exclusive jurisdiction to determine those issues. Article 163 says the High Court, the Supreme Court of Judicature has exclusive jurisdiction to determine issues of any of the type of irregularities, anomalies, fraud, actions or omissions that coming out of the Elections Commission. So leaving aside everything that we have heard so far, that it is the high court who has that jurisdiction to deal with it, but it could only come after a declaration of the election result has been made. And so far and so clinical and comprehensive, that process has been identified and delineated is that an act is created just to deal with the validity of elections. It outlines the process uh, that for you to, to deal with elect, um, elections, what we know as elections petitions, which is just that any of the issues coming out of disputes in an election has to be dealt with in an elections petition. And I just wanna conclude because APNU knows this. No matter how they twist and turn this, APNU knows this. And the reason why APNU knows this, I can give you two reasons. But they can, they can tell their followers as much as they want to uh, what they would like to tell them and give them false belief and lie to them as they constantly do. Just like they say, lying comes like talking the truth for them. Uh, the Ulita Moore case, which they brought their own APNU uh, lawyer, their own APNU uh, candidate brought, the Court of Appeal decision, which I reread today, says that all of these issues have to be done through an elections petition in the exclusive 
jurisdiction of the high court. And if you go back one step, you remember when we had brought the case uh, to get an injunction to make Mingo's declaration uh, invalid, right? Mm -hmm. Unlawful and set it aside basically, right? Which we succeeded on. These same APNU lawyers, one of whom is a candidate, they argued that these issues have, they have to be raised in an election petition after a declaration has been made. So now that they are attempting to say that GCOM has it within their, their power to declare this election to be null and void, that is totally, totally untrue. And I'm not trying to say this and treat with this from a legal standpoint to try to persuade anyone. I'm telling you what the law says. And where you know that this is what the law says, you don't have a discretion to determine. I don't want somebody to be friendly towards me to do us any favors. Do what the law says. And in this situation, what the law says is that you make a declaration and you will make a declaration uh, coming out of the recount on who would have won. And if anybody is upset and you want to get to the bottom of irregularities and anomalies, and we will assist you because we have already, we've already started to assist them, Hugh. We've already <laughs> showed that their allegations are untrue. I mean, it may not be the type of assistance they may be interested in, but we've oh, already tried to assist them. Yes, I agree with you, Charles. I think that was a very um, in-depth answer. Final week, all things being equal, um, we can't say for sure that Apni FC is going to stop with these wild allegations uh, because that is the nature of, of, the, of, the, of the party itself. We have many more fraudulent declarations that we will see coming from Mingo um, towards the end. We are expecting a declaration soon. Mingo's declaration is still held in abeyance based on what the commissioner Alexander would have said, right? All of the declarations for all the districts previously. Yeah, the, re the, report, the report from uh, uh, Low Enfield is what is held in abeyance. In abeyance, right. Yeah. So the recount is going to be the deciding factor here to declare the win of the elections. We need both GCOM and APNU FC to recognize this. Do you think it's going to happen? And why is it important for the Guyanese to understand that Mango's fraudulent declarations continue um, to, 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 to be pushed aside by the APNU AFC? while they try to trump their false claims of irregularities. Look, it's it pushed aside. Mingo's fraudulent declaration is almost, it almost is non-existent to APNU AFC. In fact, they've tried to, on many occasions, exonerate uh, Mingo's, um, Mingo's action. So instead of blaming um, or, or attempting to find out whether his declaration was fraudulent or not, they've already tried to, to exonerate him, which says to me that if you were to connect the dots, it says to me that is conclusive evidence that APNU AFC, were, they were working with Claremont Mingo to rig the election. And I'm sure that it's not Claremont Mingo alone who is involved in the rigging of the election uh, within GCOM. So I have no doubt in my mind that APNU AFC is not going to recognize uh, the, the recount, the outcome of the recount as being the, the final version of this uh, election, okay? But regardless, this country is going to move forward. It's going to move forward with or without them, we are going to extend our hand. I, I, I've heard 
the presidential candidate for, and the president-elect, Dr. Irfan Ali, and the leader of our party, uh, the general secretary, uh, Bar Jagdil. I've heard both of them say in no uncertain terms that we are going to be a, an inclusionary government and we are going to extend the olive branch in terms of how is it that we are going to be able to manage the country. But I, I, I also have to say to people that the way that they are behaving at the moment, it makes it very difficult for us as a party to, to welcome them in, in moving the country forward. But we know that we have to be very mature in how we, we manage our affairs because at the end of the day, we're not acting on behalf of ourselves. We're on, acting on behalf of all the people of this country. When a country makes a decision about who its leadership should be, that, that leadership gets a chance to prove that they are going to be acting in the best interest of all the people of the country. And that's why elections come every five years. For them, it may seem like a very long time, but it's a, not a very long time. In fact, I remember very distinctly what, what five years ago looked like, and it, it, it flew by. So I have no doubt whatsoever that they are not going to recognize the uh, result of the election, um, the recount. And, and quite frankly, we have every reason to believe that because they haven't even been signing the declarations where they won the region, right? In the, even in the regions where they won the region, they haven't even been signing those, those declarations coming out of the recount. So, uh, but on, on the other hand, we see Valda Lawrence's signature appearing on the fraudulent uh, declaration coming out of Mingo and Carol Joseph's signature appearing on the fraudulent uh, declaration coming out of, of Mingo. So they prefer to, to associate themselves with the fraud, accepting the legitimate recount and dealing with the issues in a court of law where there are rules of evidence that need to be applied in order for evidence to be tendered and accepted, et cetera. Um, so we're, we're not gonna get their uh, support in relation to the outcome of this recount, but the country is ready to move on. We already know that, that the vast majority of people voted for the People's Progressive Party. So we already have their support. But there's also a portion of people who would have voted APNU since the last election, since uh, March 2nd, that said, hey, I'm not, I never signed up for this. I never signed up for sanctions. I never signed up for rigging. I don't want to be a part of that. I, I felt as though you guys were, were the best to run the country, but I don't want to be a part of this type of behavior and some of the scandals that are coming out at the moment. So... I want to move forward with a legitimate government, and that legitimate government is the, peop the People's Progressive Party. So when you, you, even if they don't accept it, the country is going to move on regardless. You know, in, in, in when uh, Henry VIII, um, was it Henry VIII? I think it was Henry VIII, the Sun King had died. Uh, what was said in the court was, uh, the king is dead, long live the king. Um, and and that, that really goes on to say that regardless of what happens, life goes on. Even when you lose people who are really significant to the country or to you as individuals, life goes on. And they can be spoiled sports as much as they want to, where they lose the game and they go in the corner and they, they swell up the face and they don't want to play anymore and take the bat, the ball and the bat and, and they don't want to continue playing. They can do that. Get over it. They will get over it. And we really? will be willing to play another game at another time. But right now, the, the country and the world will recognize Dr. Irfan Ali as the president of this country and his new government as the legitimate government for Guyana and all around the world. Thank you very much, Charles. I think our viewers had a very good um, insight to, um, to everything that you've said. Uh, you've done an excellent job in rebuffing all of the allegations coming out of the APNUFC camp. As we know, they are trying to 
cast a shadow of doubt on the elections uh, to bring it to a stop or for them to try to see if they can move into a fresh elections. We know that's not going to happen. We know that the recount will determine the winner. We already know based on our SOPs and in the comparison with the SORs, we are going to emerge as the winner. We're not boastful about it, but we are just trying to bring clarity to the people of Guyana because people are anxious to move on with their lives. Uh, they know that the process is in its final week and we are expecting nothing but calm, peace, and we need to see this process come to a final conclusion so that we can pick our lives up back and move on with a new government that will rule for all in a an, in very inclusive way. And that is a promise that the People's Progressive Party will keep. Thank you again, Charles. And thank you, Guyana, for spending the last hour with us. Um, goodbye and good evening. Take care. All right, Charles.